from us college racing you know we we want to win trophies these guys want to send a message and jeb we feel like you're the person we want to offer you a 33 race schedule with nutrient solutions and college racing and uh we really appreciate what you're doing really, really? Uh, thank yeah. you wow thank really? you so much man really? of course i wish i could reach out and shake your hand uh, y'all, y'all telling me that y'all are doing it. We're doing it. <laughs> Surprise! Surprise. <laughs> y'all made me cry. Getting here definitely hasn't been easy. I've been working on this ever since I was a little boy. But it's more than racing. It's more than just building on my dad's legacy. This season, I'm getting to follow my other passion too. So hop on in and ride shotgun and let's visit farms all across America to learn more about what growers are doing to sustain the land for future generations. Man, I love potatoes, fried mash, covered in gravy, you name it. But I had no idea what all went into potato farming until now. Let's check it out. Good to see you. Jeb. David Ward. Nice to meet you. John nice Revels. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. So what, what, what do we have on wraps today? What are you going to show me? I, well, we're going to do our best to teach you about potatoes. Um, I, we're we're going to show you a few different sized potatoes and kind of how it goes. Uh, some tractors in the field. and We also have a, a, tree, a fernery where we do uh, some ferns for your um, flower arrangements and stuff like okay. that. We grow some ferns so we can take a look at it. It's a cool. small operation, but it's pretty neat too. Awesome. Well, I'm looking forward to it. What, what kind of potato will go in like a potato chip? A red potato or? Well, no, I mean, you could, you could, but it's not really what it was made for. So most of these are gonna go in like your grocery stores. Okay, your, the, the fresh your market potatoes. Your fresh market potatoes. Chip potatoes, all that goes in bulk. Yeah, it's, it's, a, it's in a chip bag uh, in about 72 hours yeah, of harvest. A... We grow white, yellow, and red, and even a few purples. Uh, yellow potatoes have really uh, gotten some traction here over the past, 15 years mm -hmm. and seems like that people are eating more yellow potatoes and mm -hmm. that uh that business has come a long way and so we're growing a lot more acres of yellow than 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 years before does the yellow potato have lower carb or is it the is it the, the which i know well we have a variety this year that uh i had a, a guy approach us about uh growing as a, a person we already deal with um a company uh, had a variety of yellow potato that has less carbs in it than than normal which is big nowadays for people yep so yeah, uh, everybody just, wants to be the healthiest they can not y'all too but me for sure <laughs> <laughs> they say old farmers don't like change but you know we try to to go diversify. we try to diversify and be an open mind and, and you gotta you gotta grow with with the markets or yeah. you're, you're gonna get left behind that's the life that y'all live y'all um, judging off Mother Nature, I mean, she that's decides our, it all. I mean, that's yeah. our biggest thing. I, I tell people all the time. Well, you I probably only... think about that too when you go to racetracks with that black cloud coming along. Yeah, but it, but <laughs> we can wait the next day and that's race. Right. There <laughs> you you know, go. We're not going to lose everything that's we right. worked all year for. Yeah. So. That's right. That's um, right. So we uh, we depend on the, the weather. I, I always tell people I can only control about twenty percent of this of what happens to this crop. Eighty percent of it's the weather. I mean, if if, if Good weather can make a bad farmer look decent, mm -hmm. you know, it, it, and, and vice versa. Uh, bad weather can make a good farmer look bad. And then you take what the, take what the good Lord gives you with the weather and, and, you, and you make the best of it. So this is our fernery, um, kind of new into the fern business. We, it's called leather leaf fern, it goes in your bouquets and whatever flower arrangements and stuff like that but um, this is a shade cloth because it doesn't like the sun so if you were to take it off it'd kill it the sun doesn't like, doesn't like it one good thing about this is it, it regrows you don't have to you can cut it and um, when the weather's good it'll regrow in, a, in just a few months do you and, spread fertilizer on this yep yep yeah. so we have a we have a blower sprayer there's one of these roads every so I think it's every 120 foot and uh it's a big blow fan with the spray and it blows it across and so you just like you go down and spray got it and that's one of our main concerns with you know keeping fertilizer out the river you know trying to take care of the land so you know in turn it can take care of us 
So we, me and my father, uh, developed a, uh, a fertilizer applicator that primarily most people use a spreader, you know, a slinger. It, yeah. it comes out the back and it's got That's fans. What and we it's, use. It yeah. slings. It, it throws it everywhere. And and for somebody would uh, in other parts that don't have to deal with our uh, the way we irrigate with that water fur, you don't have to worry about it as much. But we want to keep fertilizer out of that furrow, and with that slinger, you don't really have that precise. So if you're going to do it right, you got to sling some into that into that water fur, and, and we don't like to do that because essentially it's going to go straight in your totally. water in your water. So uh, we developed like a bander applicator that's more precise. It's, it's a lot bigger. It's a little more uh, to it than than just a regular spreader. But but it, each row has its own gate opening, and it just comes straight out and falls straight down, and then you can manipulate it with the with the pans at the bottom however you want. So it's more uh, precise, but it's something me and my dad came up with. Well, for, for me, like growing up, dad really uh, instilled in me the part of the sustainability conservation side of it. Yeah. You know, y'all are, y'all are doing the right thing for, for the land because you have to work it the next, next week or the next year. Mm -hmm. But for us, we're doing a lot of things with the forestry side, the okay. land management side, same yep. kind of thing for the wildlife. If you didn't do what you were doing, you know, it'd be ruts and um, all kind of things. You wouldn't you wouldn't be able to plant and, yep, and do what you need to do. That's Erosion. Right. So I think it's great. So which what's, what's your favorite? French fries or potato chips? Well, I'd have to say I'm a fry guy. We don't uh, we don't necessarily market our potatoes as French fries, but you can take our potatoes fresh out the ground and fry them and they're just as good as french fries you'll ever eat. So I, I'm saying I'm more of a french fry guy. So my wife can make some good homemade french fries and like the um, <clears throat> air, uh, what's the thing called, Brandy? The air fryer. The air fryer? Yeah. That thing is right. You gotta stay trim to get in that race yeah, car. Yeah, so that's, that's why I cut thing. back the beer a little bit. Yeah, that's <laughs> yeah. glad she's keeping you on that. You yeah. Know? You do your weigh in. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, I, I need to weigh myself before tomorrow because I need to weigh 160. I, have, I literally have to get butt naked and they put me on scale for the race season. They, like NASCAR, it's a weight break. If I'm like 159, they have to add weight to the car. Oh, so, so I have to weigh in. But see, it'd be what I used to do is I'd fill my pockets and boots full of wrenches then I'd go up there and I'd be 170. So then I'd be 20 pounds light. Yeah. In the car. But now they've figured out, so we all got to be in our boxers when we set up on the scale. Huh. I never even knew that. So. I mean, I didn't know you, it mattered about the weight. Oh, it matters. Yeah. I guess it would. Yeah. It would. Just like my Chevy versus your Ford truck going yeah. through the corner, you know what would happen there. Yeah, I'd pass you. <laughs> <laughs> Daytona is hallowed ground. This is where Dad had the biggest win of his career, the Daytona 500. I've came close to winning at Daytona. I know I have the car and I have the team to make this happen. I mean, he's, he's had a shot to win it twice and I think he's been here four times. Uh, so, you know, sometimes there's a lot of things that happen this track you cannot control. We're just hoping today that he's uh, not in the wrong place at the wrong time, but uh, he'll do the best he can and race really hard. Whoa, oh, there and is. there goes oh, Ty Dillon. Big crash. Jeff Burton coming in the outside lane. He's going to need a big push up there, Brett Moffitt, and that 10 car's got a lot of damage on it. It's still here see it comes, a huge though. push. Here it comes. And here they come. Well, we're at the airport. Uh, planes in the background. We finished fourth. So up and down day, a uh, really good way to start the year. Uh, proud of my team. They never gave up. We missed a lot of stuff uh, on the racetrack and uh, put us in position at the end. Hopefully we can uh, keep this momentum going. 